Okay, let's, instead of talking about the uniform distribution, let's move on to our continuous, continuous random variable, but today we're gonna to be talking about the normal distribution. Okay, so the normal distribution, it's also kind of known as like a Gaussian curve, is one of the fundamental pieces of statistics. And we're gonna be using this concept for a long time um, in here to come. So what it is, is it's this simple idea of like a bell curve, where we have the majority of our observations in the center and with extreme cases kind of tailing off. You can think about this as like heights of individuals. Um, people's heights are generally centered about the mean, so this would be mu or the mean, and extreme cases of people being very short or cases of people being very tall happen very infrequently. Now, one neat thing about the normal distribution is that how we draw it is really interesting. The inflection point, or where the curve goes from concave up to concave down, is the distance of sigma, of one standard deviation. And we're going to use this concept a lot. One standard deviation above and below, or we can say plus or minus one standard deviation. This is going to capture 68% of our data. And then we can go out to two standard deviations and then to three standard deviations. And two standard deviations will capture about 95%. It's not exactly, but it's pretty close. And then three standard deviations capture 99.7% of the data. So we can kind of use that to help us know about uh, how strange of an occurrence that we have. Uh, the further away that we get from the mean, the more of an oddity that we have. Now. This function is, can actually be defined. So let's, uh, let's write it out. I don't expect you to memorize it or actually, or maybe to be, just be able to recognize what it is, uh, but it's a pretty complicated function. Here we go. So our f of x, okay, this is equal to one divided by, uh, we'll do the square root of two pi sigma squared squared, sorry, multiplied by e, and then we're going to raise it to the power of negative x minus mu squared divided by 2 times sigma squared. Let me make that 2 a little bit bigger. It's a little unnecessarily small. 2 times sigma squared. Okay. So it's kind of big, it's kind of ugly. If you need to get some more reference about it, uh, we, can, um, we can go look at this in, in the book. But that gives us the definition of this curve. Now, unlike the, nor the uniform distribution, the normal distribution stretches from positive infinity to negative infinity. There isn't an upper and lower bound. And so in order for us to fully define the normal distribution, we again need two pieces of information, but it's not the max and the min. And you'll see it written a lot of times like this. We'll see the capital N that denotes that we're normally distributed. And then they'll give us the mu or the mean. And they'll give us sigma squared or the variance. So to fully define it, we need either, or we for sure need the mean. And then we either need the standard deviation or the variance. And that fully defines out our curve. Some interesting things about the normal distribution, it's symmetrical. So if you fold it about the middle, it's the same both to the left and the right, which is really nice. It means that the mean, the median, and the mode are all right at the exact same point. Um, so other things about it are that we're going to still use the same principles about trying to determine like um, the probability of an event happening. So we know that from the mu, we know that 50% of the data is less than mu and 50% is above. That's really nice to know. And then if we wanted to find like the probability of being between two values, we would just be looking at what proportion of the area under the curve is captured between two spots. 
So I'd look at between these two values and I'd say, I don't know, there's probably maybe, oh, somewhere between 40 to like 60% of the data between those two spots. Now, when we, were, when we did it with the uniform distribution, you could just look at the area of the box. You could do the range multiplied by the, the height of the uniform distribution, and that would give you the area. This one is much more complicated. Uh, in fact, even calculus has difficulties doing this, as this is a, an equation that you can't even integrate. So you have to use kind of approximation techniques, and thankfully I'm not going to drag you through all that. We've got software that will do it for us. Um, but when we use our software, we still want to use um, our CDF, our concept of the CDF. So we can look at this value, and in the CDF, we'd get the probability from this point and everything to the left. Same thing over here, probability from, from the, this value, and we get everything to the left. And then to find the probability of being between these two points, we take the probability from here to the left, subtract the probability from here to the left, and then that would give us our, the probability that we are looking for. So a lot of things in nature kind of fall out like this, like I was talking about heights. Um, other things kind of fall out like this, like for the most part, like housing prices can fall out like, like this if you kind of ignore the ridiculously expensive houses. Um, you can look at running speeds or uh, lots and lots of things clump around the mean and then extreme cases a uh, tail off. So that's really kind of what we're looking for in our uh, normal distribution. Um, now we can also ask questions about like, okay, I want to know the 25th quantile or I want to know where 25% of the data is to the left. And we can do that in our commander. We can go, go check that out. If you want some more specifics on that, please go um, either read up in the book or also just look at my software videos. They'll help you out with that. There's one more thing that I want to cover before I end this video, and it's the concept of a z-score. So the standard deviation is really helpful because it helps us know like how spread out our data is. So sometimes we want to know like just how many standard deviations away from the mean is an observation. And we can do that. So this is called our z-score. Let me get a different marker. So the z-score is equal to x, which is our observation, minus mu, or the mean of our distribution, divided by sigma. This will give us both how far away from the mean we are and also the direction. Are we above the mean or are we below the mean? And we're going to really be using some of these concepts in order to calculate out like confidence intervals, eventually to do hypothesis testing, and it's kind of based around this concept of the z-score. So this is our normal distribution. Thankfully, the principles that we learned with the uniform distribution are the same. And I hope that that helps you out. Uh, please watch the videos, and good luck.